Well, hello and welcome. Uh, this is the Climate Collaboratory, and I am Sue Blythe, and I'm just delighted to have uh, Mary Ann Schmink and Angela Terrell with me today. And, and we've been working on a community-wide climate conversation in Alachua County, Florida. Hello, it's me, the sage and Grandma Sue Blythe, and I have a story that I want to tell my grandchildren and all grandchildren. It's a story about this critical moment in Earth's history, a turning point in the story of life on Earth. On the Road to 2030, 2050, and Beyond is a collaborative storytelling adventure for the human family. We are one human family and one Earth community with a common destiny. And this will give a little background of what we're doing. Throughout human history, people have told stories about how the universe was created and how life began and how the human family came to populate the whole earth. And in each part of the world, People tell stories about past generations and their own local history. And every one of us has our own story to tell about this critical moment in Earth's history. That's right. And so we're going to be telling a little bit of that story. Uh, and I have two people who are telling their part of the story. Let me. Bring up my friends, uh, Angela Terrell is here, and Marianne Schmink. And let me introduce each of you, and then we'd like to hear your stories about what you're doing uh, to help make a sustainable, just, and peaceful future. Angela Terrell has distinguished herself for 50 years as a strong advocate of arts education. Angela's passion for music is a melody she's followed all her life. Her ultimate goal is to expose our young people to the arts through acting, instrumental, and vocal music experience. Upon her retirement, the auditorium at a local elementary school was named the Terrell Performing Arts Center in her honor. Welcome, Angie Terrell. Hello, let, Sue. And let me introduce Mary Ann Schmink is a founding volunteer of the Community Weatherization Coalition in Gainesville, Florida, and a member of the Alachua County NAACP Environmental and Climate Justice Committee and other local service organizations. She's a professor emerita and distinguished teaching scholar of Latin American studies and anthropology at the University of Florida, where she served as the director of the Tropical Conservation and Development Program from 1988 to 2010. Over 40 years, she worked on conservation and development issues in the Amazon region of South America. Welcome, Mary Ann Schmink. Thank you so much, Sue. Very exciting to have both of you here. And uh, we'd like to hear from each of you about how you have, uh, what you do in the world and how you got there. What is it that inspired you to do the work you do? It's just a pleasure to be with you again, Sue, and, and to talk about a topic that's dear to my heart as well as yours. Um, it's, a, it's a funny story, the way that I ended up in the arts. Uh, when I was growing up, I had no say-so over this. My parents decided, especially my dad, that I was going to play the piano because he was the superintendent of our Sunday school at church and he was over all the things like that. So when my friends would be outside playing dodgeball and hot, hop, hopscotch, I'd be inside at the piano learning what a friend we have in Jesus and Jesus loves me. And I just said, when I got to be an adult, the last thing I ever was going to do in my whole life was music. 
And of course, I graduated from Lincoln High School, which is now Lincoln Middle School in Gainesville, and went on to Hampton University in Virginia for four years. Well, that first semester, I decided I was gonna be a nurse. I was not gonna do music. So in my second day of on the track to be a nurse, I was in a lab and we were dissecting a frog. We cannot maintain our earth ecosystem or continue uh, fu to function as we do uh, if more sustainable choices are not made. You know, if harmful processes are maintained with no changes um, uh, from the business world, from the corporate world, from the local communities, it is, you know, it's likely that a huge number of our animal species may even become extinct and our atmosphere will be um, irreparably damaged. So as I continue to engage in the arts, and as I continue to engage my students in this process, I am hoping and believing that this is gonna be a road and an avenue to help us maintain a, a, a sustainable climate, a sustainable earth and environment. Beautiful. And I know I had such a good time working with you and those wonderful young people at Star Center Theater. And, and just let me give two minutes to that that collaboration. Um, some of those youth have gone on to college now. One of the main leaders in that uh, group, and I'm sure his family would not mind me using his name, calling out his name, but Caleb Little. Uh, he's now gone on to Tallahassee to be a freshman in college. But he was such a creative little young man. And... Um, we gave him a few tools to work with because we wanted to present a story, our own personal story. And uh, he helped to write it. Not only did he help to write the story, but he even created the music to go with it. And every once in a while, when, when Star Center has to go somewhere to perform, we would gather Caleb and his original selections and his group of Star Center kids that worked with him. And we would continue that story that they built with Sue right on a platform like this. So they're still carrying the story for people to learn and listen. And uh, that was created about a year ago. And the first performance was done uh, at a setting at Star Center Theater, where we invited the community and star parents and and uh, members of uh, the leadership in Gainesville. And they told that story with such great pride <laughs> and uh, it was well received. And I, as I close, I wanna say to Sue, I am so glad that you're on this platform and I'm looking forward to you continuing this journey. And as you continue, as kids go off to college, there are others coming up and you need to make sure you include them in this story. Well, they are an important part of this story, that's for sure. And what we're trying to do is get a sense of collaboration among the generations so that we can feel like we are using the strengths of both because so many yeah. of us have been working on these issues for decades, 50 years, decades. some of us. Decades. And, and, yeah. uh, and we have learned a lot it's not all things that the kids need right now, but we have a lot that can be used and we want to share that. And uh, we know that the kids are the ones who are most affected by all this uh, changing climate and have the most at stake. And so we want to give them wow. all the tools we can to help make a difference. And I want to just put one more piece in there about Caleb and those kids that put yes. on the show, because um, what I remember is that, uh, that we had the sustainable development goals, and we mm -hmm. talked about the five P's that all 17 yes, talked about. Talk about the people, first, no, first mm -hmm. the planet, and then people, planet, people. partnerships. Peace and prosperity. Peace prosperity. Yeah. Yes. 
And uh, so Caleb wrote a song for each of those. He had about 15 kids on the stage that were singing and dancing their hearts out. They had a three-piece band, and it was just fabulous. The younger kids, middle schoolers, uh, each uh, put on a, a little skit for each of those topics. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. the, the story that they told was uh, re remembering from the year 2050, the day that those kids <laughs> started this uh, climate conversation in Alachua County. And that it mm. is being told all year long this year is 2024, and uh, it's our 200th anniversary in Alachua County. And so we are working together to tell a really good story. And I thank you so much, Angie, for being part of that, an important part thank of that story. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity. And then, Marianne, you're a, a very active person in our community, and I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about what you're up to these days. Yes, well, I started out not from the arts side, but from the science side. As a university professor, I'm an anthropologist, so I'm a social scientist, but I was working with a lot of science, biological scientists in the Amazon region, and I learned how important it was to look at the intersection of environmental and social issues. And <clears throat> that led me to look for ways that I could have a practical impact in my own community. Um, and what I found to work on was helping people in improve their the energy efficiency of their homes. This was a problem that, that a group of churches pointed to because the churches end up having to help people pay their bills a lot of times. We decided that it made sense to start an organization that could train volunteers that would go to people's homes and help them find ways to reduce their use of energy and water and reduce those bills. And that would be a win-win for the environment and for their own pocketbooks. So the Community Weatherization Coalition, we started in 2008 um, after a couple of years of meeting as a, as a group of organizations to try to figure out how to do this. We've, um, since then, the CWC has been able to help almost 2,000 homes reduce their energy bills. I'm one of still an active volunteer. We spend two to three hours in people's homes learning with them about different ways that they can make their homes more energy efficient. We also do a few things like changing light bulbs and insulating hot water pipes and things like that. And people save on average about 10% from the help that we give them and, and it also helps to make them more aware of other ways they can save in the future. So their savings tend to go down. And so this was a, a really great start for trying to have a concrete impact on a big problem um, by helping people directly. And over time, I learned how important energy efficiency was as a step toward a more just transition to a, a, a cleaner climate, a cleaner energy future. Um, really, we need to take advantage of the savings of energy through energy conservation in people's homes and buildings before trying to, to, to reduce our need for energy. And that's the best way to avoid having to build new power plants. So this led me into broader interests. I, I became a member of the county NAACP Environmental and Climate Justice Committee, chaired by Nkwanda Ja, who's been a really visionary leader and have worked very closely with her since then. That organization 
that committee brings together all the environmental groups in our community. And we've had a focus on uh, sponsoring a series of community forums to help the whole community understand and have input into solutions for an environmental and social issues as they intersect on, on food, energy, climate, housing. And uh, we've had, I believe, six community forums since 2018. The, the most recent one is coming up September 28th in Hawthorne, Florida, the um, Sustainability and Resilience Summit that will be focusing on that part of our county. Um, then I've started working on a, a broader project called the Empower Coalition, which came out of one of those NAACP community forums when we continued talking with uh, county, Latchwood County staff and other people and ended up applying for a grant from the Department of Energy, which we were lucky enough to win in 2022, two years ago. It's not a grant a money grant, but technical assistance, but it's brought together the city, the county, um, several nonprofits, including Cultural Arts Coalition, NAACP, CWC, and three specific neighborhoods, Greater Duval, Spring Hill and Sugar Hill, and Swag neighborhoods, all of which had active neighborhood associations that were, were interested in collaborating with us, and all of whom had uh, residents who faced really high energy bills because of, in many cases, the age um, and lack of efficiency of their homes. So we're trying to address these issues on a much broader scale, but always with the focus on listening to the communities and making sure that the, the, the most disadvantaged people in our community are the ones who receive the assistance they need to make a fair transition in this changing climate. So that's that's a kind of a brief summary of, of the things I'm trying to work on. Well, I sure thank you. It's wonderful work that you're doing and so many different uh, levels and working directly with people in their homes and uh, helping to make a difference so that we are doing less polluting as we live together in this community. Yeah. So as uh, we move toward the uh, anniversary of our, of our county, we're going to be telling the story of uh, going from 1824, when we still had enslavement in this county, and looking at 1924, when we were uh, beginning to see all the trains and the cars and the planes at that time starting to make a difference in in our atmosphere. And uh, coming into 2024 to see how those changes have impacted our community and what people are doing to help make things better for future generations. And so I want to thank both of you so much for all the wonderful work that you do. And uh, I look forward to working with you on this intergenerational climate conversation in Alachua County. Thank you thank both you. very much. Thank you, Angie. Uh, do you want to give some information about how people can get in touch with you if they like? Um, uh, but if you would like to contact me at either of my major uh, uh, places where I volunteer my time, that would be Star Center Theater and Caring and Sharing Learning School. Um, and uh, if you call either one of those and leave a message, I will get back in contact with you. Very good. I just wanted to share a little plug for our upcoming energy coach training. So if people are interested in learning how to be, become an energy coach and help people in our community use their energy use and water use and save money, 
this is your opportunity. We have trainings twice a year, and this is our next one coming up October 23rd, 30th, and November 2nd. Um, you can always get in touch with me through the Community Weatherization Coalition. Wonderful. And uh, I wanted to just mention that uh, we we are planning to do another little uh, trailer video of our collaborative storytelling on the road to 2030, 2050 and beyond with uh, this year's Star Center Theater Youth. And uh, that will become part of our uh, bicentennial climate story with the Matheson History Museum. They'll make an online exhibit of uh, our 200 year history. And so it's just really exciting to be part of this. And I thank you both for joining us on the road. Thank you, Sue. And thank you. It's been my pleasure.